Life is humming along relatively smoothly ever since the 2014 military coup which toppled the civilian government of former Prime Minister Yingluck Shinawat. Raucous street protests which plunged the city in turmoil are now a thing of the past. But amidst the calm, strong undercurrents are bubbling as the election season heats up. For many observers, the upcoming general election on the 24th of March is a political tussle between a military-dominated party and the pro-democracy parties which would like to build genuine democracy. The military seized power in a coup five years ago to bring an end to months of political turmoil in the country, but the stability has come at great costs. The restoration of law and order has been very effective. Why? Because every time two, three people, not even five, stage a protest or saying something, criticizing the government, they'll be arrested right away. Very few people have been brave enough to come out and say something. I think in the first couple of years, you know, they did a brilliant job of uh, creating a, a more stable environment um, for business to prosper. The reality is many Thais have become sick and tired of the series of protests that paralyzed the city and brought Bangkok to a standstill, affecting business and the daily lives of residents. 45-year-old Sasi Posayajinda, owner of Living Sea Diving Company in Bangkok, for example, suffered during the days of chaos and unrest in the streets of the capital five years ago. ช่วงก่อนที่รัฐบาลหันจะเข้ามาควบคุมเหตุการณ์นะคะช่วงที่เป็นซัดดาวไทยแลนด์ที่มีความวุ่นวายเกิดขึ้นเนี่ยตอนนั้นถามว่ากระทบธุรกิจไหมมีผลกระทบธุรกิจบ้างแต่ในส่วนของการจัดธุรกิจที่เป็นทริปดำน้ำออกไปนอกประเทศเนี่ยเป็นส่วนที่ได้ผลกระทบน้อยที่สุดเพราะว่าเชื่อว่าลูกค้าหรือว่านักดำน้ำส่วนใหญ่ที่เป็นคนไทยเนี่ยเบื่อหน่ายกับเหตุการณ์ตอนนั้นส่วนตัวแล้วเนี่ยสนับสนุนรัฐบาลทหารเหตุผลคือจริงๆแล้วตอนนี้เนี่ยไม่ไม่เห็นว่าจะมีนักการเมืองหรือว่าพรรคไหนที่จะเป็นตัวแทนหรือจะขึ้นมาเป็นผู้นําประเทศได้ในในในรูปแบบที่จะสามารถพาประเทศหรือเศรษฐกิจประเทศไปได้รอดจริงๆนะคะ Stability and order have certainly helped the economy move back on the growth track. Thailand's GDP grew at 3.7% since 2016, after experiencing a sharp downturn in 2014. But it's still lagging behind its regional competitors. Growth also seems to be losing its momentum of late. They perform poorly in terms of the economy. People are suffering economically countrywide, especially in rural areas and in the provinces. They haven't been able to put into effect any fundamental reforms, as promised. And following the slowdown of the economy, income inequality has also widened. And that has exerted a heavy burden on ordinary people. Because the government sponsored and continued growth of tourism in this country, the numbers are not bad. The economy continues to grow. But the big thing is that it hurts ordinary people. We believe that growth will happen at the top and it will trickle down to the bottom. We tried that for 30 years, 40 years. And what is the result? The top always going up and the bottom didn't follow. We may follow, but in very slower rate. And that's exactly inequality is rising. 